Great. Hi, everyone. We're so excited to be here at our second ever Facebook Live for Teal Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Mary Wheatley. It's my honor to serve as the CEO of the National Scleroderma Foundation. Um, we're so excited to do this monthly um, Teal Talk celebration and to do two sessions each week where we're live with you, our community. Um, and I'm really grateful to have with me here today for our Teal Talk live event, Desi James from our Florida chapter. Um, so we're going to get to chat with Je Desi throughout um, our live event today and just want to share a little bit with you all if it's your first time joining about what our um, Awareness Month campaign is really all about. So this year's theme is Let's Talk About Scleroderma. And our hashtag is Teal Talk, so we hope that you'll use it all month long to help us raise awareness about scleroderma. Um, it's such an important way for us to educate people about this disease. And so our goal in really raising awareness is to help people understand, you know, what are the signs and symptoms of the disease? Who can it affect? Which is everyone, right? So whether it's um, a young person or someone, you know, um, more senior in life and anyone in between, men, women, children, it really can affect anyone. And if we can educate people about these signs and symptoms and who can be affected by the disease, then our hope is that we can get people to the specialists that can identify and diagnose the disease earlier um, because then there's a better chance of catching it and actually treating it. Um, even though we have limited treatments, we are funding really critical research to help uh, really develop new treatments and therapies for the future. And there are some that are effective um, today. So it's, it's looking a lot better than it was, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And we have so much more hope for the future because of the important work that we're doing. But by raising awareness this month, we're hoping that all year long, um, people will be talking about scleroderma, learning about scleroderma, um, getting people who need to be seen by specialists diagnosed earlier and getting them into treatment so they can live better lives. Um, so our Teal Talk series has a couple of different ways that you can interact with us and learn more about scleroderma. One is our live events on social media, which are every Tuesday throughout the month where we have special guests like Desi who will share. And if you're here already, you know, you can participate uh, with hashtag Teal Talk uh, throughout the month. And then we also have a Teal Talk table series, which is the Thursday um, every Thursday of the month where it's your chance to come together as a community. We have breakouts where you really just get to know other people living with scleroderma, whether they're caregivers um, or if they're living with the disease themselves or if they're just supporters of the community. So we look forward to engaging you in those. Um, but for now, I really want to turn it over to Desi. And Desi, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey with scleroderma? Sure. Thanks, Mary. I'm really glad to be here today. But as Mary mentioned, my name is Desiree James. I am a member of the Southeast Florida chapter, uh, where I also chair our uh, chapter advisory committee. I am also a co-leader of our support groups, and I am a scleroderma patient. And my journey started uh, about 15 years ago. And my symptoms included, at the beginning, uh, skin tightening. Um, I also had uh, ulcers on my fingers. I was experiencing fatigue. I had just a small issue uh, with my lungs. And like many scleroderma patients, it took probably a year to be diagnosed. And I happened to be living and working in the Chicago area at the time. And you talk about being in the right place at the right time. I was referred to Northwestern Hospital, which happens to be a scleroderma center of excellence. And I received coordinated care. And I wanna emphasize the word coordinated. Uh, I had a team of doctors that, and specialists that were led by my rheumatologist. Uh, they made sure I had the right test, um, that they were seeing me often enough, and I continued treatment with Northwestern until I retired and moved back to the Fort Lauderdale area. And once I retired and returned home, uh, unfortunately, some of my symptoms continued to progress. 
The skin tightening became very severe. The ulcers uh, on my fingers became very painful. Um, I developed uh, as recently as maybe 18 months ago, I now have a diagnosis of lung fibrosis <clears throat> and uh, pulmonary hypertension. And uh, fortunately, my heart is in uh, good shape. Uh, I struggle with some GI issues uh, from, from time to time. Thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that, Debbie, Desi, and you've been such mm -hmm. a great advocate um, for our community and such a great leader as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how and when you got involved with the foundation? Yeah, um, it, it was really a number of years, uh, Mary, after I was diagnosed. It was after I had retired and returned to Florida. Uh, by that time, I kind of got my head wrapped around what was happening to me and in this condition called scleroderma. And I started doing a little bit of research to try to find out what I could uh, even more about the condition. But unfortunately, shortly, a few months after I got home, our daughter experienced a very life-threatening health issue. So I put everything on the back burner regarding myself and my scleroderma until we could get her back up and on her feet. And that took about six months. And by that time I'd, I'd done some research, I found out there were some local support groups. I started uh, attending the support groups. And I also started attending and getting involved in some of the other uh, patient related events that were taking place like the walk. Uh, and that's where, <clears throat> and at the support group meetings and the walk is where I, I met and got to know our executive director, Fern Robin. And I was so impressed by Fern, especially when I found out she doesn't have scleroderma. No one in her family has scleroderma, but she was so committed to what she was doing that at that time, uh, I started asking her, Fern, if you ever need help with anything, let me know I'm available. So I started volunteering at different events. And I guess it's been about two and a half years now since she invited me to join the uh, advisory committee. So oh, it's, yeah. Uh, that's amazing. And uh, we're so grateful for your leadership on that advisory committee as well. And I I have to wonder how many stories start that way, right? With uh, meeting Fern Robin, who is such mm -hmm. a rock star in our community and, and such a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. um, so getting kind of plugged into the community and learning about support groups, what was your experience in kind of connecting with the scleroderma community? And, and what did you find helpful? Uh, just having someone that understood what I was going through. When I was living in Chicago after the initial diagnosis, I was actually there alone. My husband and my family were still here in Florida. He was working in Florida uh, and I was there in Chicago. I didn't have anyone to turn to. Uh, I did have some friends that I could, could speak with, uh, very close friends that I could talk about. Uh, the uh, the condition with them and and some of the the challenges that I was experiencing, but uh, to be able to have a group of people who were going through some of the same challenges that I was going through has has been amazing. I have uh, developed new relationships. I've made uh, new friends. I've continued to to learn even more about scleroderma through um, through the uh, patient education events that we have uh, by attending the conference, which we I'm looking forward to the one here in Florida uh, next month. So I I continue to learn. I continue to learn, and uh, I just hope that I can give back at least half of what I have gained from being involved with, uh, with the foundation in our community. Oh, well, 
what a powerful statement. And I know that family means so much to you. And I've had the pleasure of meeting some of your family yeah. because for you, I know it's really a family affair and you get everyone involved and helping at the walks and, right. and things like that. Um, you're so great at raising awareness and talking about scleroderma, you know, in your community, in your network. What is the Florida chapter doing this month to help, you know, spread the word and, and raise awareness? Well, we've uh, submitted requests for proclamations. Uh, we received one Friday from uh, one of the House of Representative members here in Florida. Bernd and I were able uh, to pick that one up on, on Friday. And last night, I had also submitted one, and this was my first time submitting a request for a proclamation. Uh, the training that we got uh, was very good. So uh, I felt comfortable doing it this year. So at, I live in the city of Water Hill, Florida, and uh, I was invited to the commission meeting last night. My family was there with me and they awarded the proclamation and I was expecting them to uh, hand it over, take a quick picture, and send us on our way so they could get to the business of the city. They actually took the time, read the entire proclamation, gave me an opportunity to say a few words. Of course, we had the, the photo op. Uh, so I had an opportunity to give what I call my scleroderma elevator speech, right? So I had the opportunity to do that. But I think the most amazing thing that happened last night, there was a young man in the audience who got up and asked if he could say a few words after I was done. He asked me to stay at the podium. He walked up and he began to tell us this story. And every time I think about it, and I'm getting the chills right now, but he shared a story about a good friend of his who he considered a brother who happened to be serving in the military, who died of scleroderma. Now, maybe there were maybe 50 people in that room. What are the odds of, of that happening? You know, when scleroderma is such a rare uh, disease. So he, he shared that story with us. And I think between the two of us, there are gonna be a number of people in that room that are gonna remember scleroderma. Oh, what a powerful testament to just spreading the word and raising awareness. And this is exactly why we talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, oh, just so incredible of you to share that story with us and to do all of the work that you do. Um, as you kind of think about, you know, your journey with scleroderma and experiences like this, where you are able to give back in such meaningful ways, why do you think that those who are impacted by this disease should have hope for a better tomorrow? You know, I, I, I shared part of my story and let me just share a little bit more. Um, you know, it, it came to a point where, especially with the skin thickening, where it, it got really hard to manage day to day. Uh, things such as trying to bend over to tie my shoes, I couldn't do. Uh, being able to open a bottle of water became different. Today, things are, are better for me. I, I can tie my shoes. It may not be the neatest bow, <laughs> but I can bend over and tie my shoes. Most of the time now, I'm able to open a bottle of water. So I just want everyone to know that things can get better. And uh, putting my story aside, just thinking about uh, and I think you, you mentioned it when, when we opened up or maybe we talked about it uh, offline, but just thinking about the work that's being done by so many people out there on our behalf, on the behalf of the scleroderma community. We've, I know we've got uh, the foundation provides money and gives awards to researchers uh, to, to look for what's going to benefit the community. And I'm a recipient of that. With regards to my pulmonary issues, I am taking one of the, the medications. I used to wake up every morning coughing with a runny nose, and it was all related to my lung issues. That has pretty much gone away, 95% of it. 
Uh, we have our volunteers that are out there working on our behalf. Um, there's just a lot of good work and a lot of folks that are out there supporting us and care about us and love us. So there's there's a reason for hope. There is reason to, to stay hopeful. And I don't think, honestly, I don't think I've ever run into a scleroderma patient that didn't have hope. We are a very strong community, a very brave group of, of people, uh, and we're fighters, and we're going to keep fighting. Well, I can't think of a, a better note to, to wrap it up on. Um, Desi, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today and to share so openly with our community and to share your story and just to really inspire, I think, all of us um, during Awareness Month, but really throughout the year to be able to kind of come back and, and use this as a touch point to keep us going for the important work um, that you've highlighted that we do. And again, just want to say how grateful we are for the work that you're doing to help raise awareness uh, about scleroderma in Florida and beyond um, to your entire chapter and your advisory committee and Fern and everyone there. Um, we're so grateful and we're so looking forward to being with you uh, for conference. And I know a lot of yeah. you are volunteering and mm -hmm. looking forward to being together in Orlando, July 14th through 16th. So I'll put a plug in if you haven't registered yet. I don't know what you're waiting for. Go to scleroderma.org slash conference to register today. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us today. We're really grateful for the opportunity to just share with you kind of what we're working on, what we're doing um, to help raise awareness through these Teal Talk events. And we'll be here each week in June, all month long. Um, so we have our next table series coming up on Thursday and you can register once and then you're registered for all the sessions. And just come when you can. Um, and then once a week, we'll go live like we did today with Desi and friends like Desi will share their stories and, and help us talk about scleroderma. Um, so join us, use the hashtag Teal Talk all month long, and you can register for those table series and learn more about everything we're doing across our community, across all of our chapters at scleroderma.org slash Teal Talk. Thanks again for joining. And thank you so much, Desi. All right. Thank you, Mary. Bye, everyone. Bye.